Hi, I'm Adam from EnglishAcon.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at the image editor found in Construct 2. Now if I open up Construct 2 and if I create a new blank empty project and then if I double click or double tap and then scroll down there are several objects which use the image editor um, one of them being sprite which is a very common one you've also got sprite font tile background tile maps and night patch in this video I'm just going to talk about the image editor and not the animation which you normally would consider if we just um, create a sprite object then there are several things the sprite object has so when you first create a sprite object the image editor is automatically open and as I just mentioned I'm not going to consider these two at the moment the animation frame and the animations I'll consider that in another uh, video which will be the next one now this is the image editor and there are several things you can do here primarily it's used to create an image which represents your sprite to open the image editor um, just simply double click on your sprite or object and you should be open there are several things you can do where you can create the image yourself for example on the left you have different tools you have the rectangular select to select an area which you can then either co uh, copy or I press cut then which is control X then I can press control V to paste it and then move it around I can also cut and then move around parts of the image that's the cut tool at the top I can then uh, rub things out I have the option of size of the rubber or the eraser um, I should call it eraser because of the American audience um, the hardness so if I set the hardness to let's see what it goes up to 255 it's a very round um, shape whereas if it's just one it's a, a cloudy shape there's a fade effect there so there's two options um, I can then use the pen which is a very thin line on the left when I use the pen or other tools such as the brush I get the color palette which opens this is an RGB color palette I can select the HSL color palette um, on the right and this gives me val values which I can choose like the luminosity saturation and hue which I can alter or if you're more familiar with red green and blue which make comprise colors um, you can click on RGB to select those you can select any color from the palette simply by clicking where you want it and then the darkness or the, or the brightness by sliding this slider so you can use that to draw you can also change the opacity from 0 to 255 by changing the alpha with RGB all of these values go between 0 to 255 or 255 sorry or 255 so that's the same for any of those and it's just the mixture of the red green and blue which give the, the hue and the alpha which is the opacity now the same th you find the same thing with the other tools such as the paintbrush the paintbrush is similar to the pen but you can have a different size so this is size 20 and a different hardness so size that was hardness 1 whereas this is hardness 50 you can also have smooth movement which smooths out the drag so if I try and do a, <laughs> a corner or such as that if I weren't to have smooth movement then you might notice some straight edges but smooth just smooths it out as you'd expect these have the same RGB values or HSL where you can change the hue saturation and luminosity and also alpha so if for example I'm just going to select all this press and then using the rectangle select and press delete to wipe it out alternatively I can go to clear image at the top to clear the image go back to the paintbrush um, click on something like I don't know any color it doesn't really matter change the opacity to let's say 75 or 76 um, I can then draw oh this is not going to show up very well the hardness is too hard change the hardness alpha have a lower alpha 10 I could then um, with great precision create the image I want basically it's just to show you that you can create a graduation effect using the opacity like you would in other programs now traditionally 
uh, Construct 2 didn't have this image editing tools you had to actually import animation frames in and just a quick side note um, we'll talk about animation frames later on but if you're only including one image in your sprite then it will be the first animation frame now some of the other objects which we'll look at in a minute won't have the animation frames at all which is why I'm not discussing them but they would technically be the first frame now other tools you can use the line tool simply choose the thickness at the top and then you can draw the line the opacity is quite uh, low so you may not be able to see that draw a line nice straight line blah 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 isn't that cool um, you can hold down control by the way to select the color that you want so if I wanted the blue color hold down the control and click it on here to copy it which is the same as using the color picker to pick a color you can also draw rectangles so I could draw nice big rectangles I could cover the whole thing maybe if I drop that down to 10 darken the color I can draw nice patterns to have this nice square effect which everybody loves um, there's the fill effect which I can use to fill in either the color I touch or if it's empty the the, the whole screen so 255 five, there we go fill it in as I mentioned before the color picker there just chooses the color so if I were to use this and do a random color like a red or something and then I could choose the color blue just by using the color picker or if I had the paintbrush selected I just hold down control and click on that color um, coming down to the bottom you've got these two things you've got a collision polygon now if I just come out of the image uh, editor if I click on my, my shape if I come down to the bottom and if I have collisions enabled then I'll be using the collisions um, a collision box around the sprite and Construct 2 would be using this to calculate when this collides with another sprite if I double click on the image come on, um, then I have uh, this editable collision box um, called the collision polygon if I wanted to have an image whereby objects only collide with the inside I can quite easily create the shape such as that to create this image um, I can also right click and I can delete points or I can double click and add points so you saw one was added there if I double click on this one on the right it will add a point directly in the center of these two points uh, there is a maximum number of points you can have as I just showed you just now this is the maximum number I think oh no it continues to add in but it suggests creating too many points can make the game run slow it's recommended to have eight or fewer so you potentially could have quite a few points to have a very detailed collision box but it's suggested that you don't have so many now if I select and then press delete I can delete them straight away and there is a minimum number of points that you can you can have which is three because you have to always have a polygon so if I try and delete these I'll right click and see I can't delete these um, it says can't delete these points you must have at least three points in a collision polygon because it is a collision polygon but just a side note if you're creating a mobile game and you want to increase the um, frame rate one way is to reduce the amount of polygon uh, points that you have so let's say you had a square shape there's no point having five polygon bits where it's a square shape you could have four you could even have a very small one if the collisions are only coming from the right you could get away with just three if there's no collisions on the top just because it can detect them uh, one thing to consider though with collisions and polygons is that if you're having um, a game and you're having a, a sprite moving let's say at 50 pixels each time um, it's kind of jumping around so sometimes the collision isn't detected because you've either jumped straight away over it although the way it appears on your screen was as if two objects have collided they technically haven't collided so that's one thing to consider because sometimes you may need to create a collision polygon which is actually larger than the image itself let's say if the image didn't have the sides um, moving over here to the left you've also got what's known as the origin and image points if you click on it there'll always be one normally your image point box will be here on the left and that's 
um, number zero, which is the name, origin, which is the very center of your um, image. And you can change this if you've selected um, image points and you've selected it. With the keypad, if you press seven, you go to the top left, eight, you go to the top right, nine, you go to the top right, sorry, eight's at the very top, five's in the dead center, four's on the left, and the other keys are in the obvious renovated points. You could also manually place these points just by making sure it's selected then just touching it wherever you want. These points are used, uh, the origin is used in rotation so for example if I have this up in the corner now you'll see that this icon to rotate is now up in the corner if I move it down to the center again then now it's moved down to the center. This is the axis almost of the image which is the origin. Um, sometimes it's used in calculations uh, which I'll show in a minute where you would actually position things related to image points on here. You can add new image points by clicking on this plus and so this is image point one and you notice that it's a different shape, it's a square shape and I can place this just as I could with the other one pressing the number key numbers to change the position to an exact position. I can also change the position using these numbers at the top increasing it, decreasing it, typing it in um, for more accuracy, Ooh, sorry I should type it in then press enter um, on top of that, uh, I can also rename these, so this could be image point crazy. Uh, I wouldn't suggest using that to rename it. Um, but you can always tell the origin because the origin has this crosshair effect, whereas these other image points have this square effect. Now, it is, I haven't mentioned it, but it is possible with the collision box, if you were to right click on the point, to actually apply the collision box to the whole animation so rather than going through each frame where um, you can do that and you can also guess the polygon size and use construct 2 to actually guess it or set a bounding box these are other options they're worth playing around with now concerning these image points there if we just close the image editor um, and go to the event sheet let's go to system and let's go to every tick let's go to every tick sprite set its position we could actually choose sprite and we wouldn't we won't do this but you can actually set use the image points values x or y um, as values within your game you then have to double click where it says image point and then you choose which Im image point the origin is always image point zero whereas the other image points are one two or how many you have um, you may be able to use the name I generally use the number uh, here and that point rule would, will relate to where the sprite currently is, its current position using the image point zero or the origin and then it will, it will plus and minus the necessary x or y pixels from the origin to actually get to this position so if you wanted the x position of this it will be relative to the whole layout not with just within the um, uh, sprite if that makes sense um, and let's see if you position something to another object so if I were to position this to another object I, and I, if I were to choose itself I can place the position of this to any one of its uh, image points so maybe better if I create a second sprite here uh, and I'm just going to colour this red like that and I'm going to put the image point at the bottom right hand corner and if I create a new image point, which I have to remember the number, image point 4, and I'm going to place this at the very top left of the image, not the whole image, but the actual visible image, and let's say on start of layout, position the red box, position to another object, and I'll just go through that because I went through quite quickly, just going to delete this, so double click, click on system, scroll down, click on on start of layout, click on action here click on sprite 2, double click, scroll down to set position to another object, click on it then I can choose the the object I want to set to and I want to set it to the sprite and I want to set it to its image point 4 so I press done. Now when I press preview it positions the red dot wherever it, the red dot's image origin is which was here to the image point for the blue one which is on its left corner. So if I go back to here, the image, the origin, I've only got one image point for this red thing is here, so it actually positions it 
where I put image point four. If I click on that, which is here, so it positions it like that. And so you can use that. A good way is if you have a character with armor, you can have the armor and you can position it always to where that armor is. So if it's walking along, it can always be on the shoulder, say if it's the shoulder guard. So that's the use of the um, image points. And you can use those values and you can change and edit those values um, using the event sheets. Now, if you double click back on this, there's also some tools you can use at the top. There's this one which is load image and save. If I first save the image, I can save that image which I've just created. Let's call it cool because uh, I'm crazy and save that to the desktop. So I've just saved this image. If I click on X and I double click on this one, then I can use that file there to load an image and I'll load it from the desktop which is cool, the one I've just saved and it loads straight back in here. So now both of these look like the same image. If I double click on this, the next one is set export image format. So I can actually set the export image and I have a series of uh, options I can use to export this image. Uh, what it means by export is to save it to another file or the desktop. So I could choose it to save it into the JPEG format if I wanted to. Um, next to that I've got these new um, options which were introduced in a recent update. Link to original source file. So I could actually choose a file that I want to store my images in and I can link back to that and this means that whenever I change the images within those files then the sprite images automatically change and I can reload from the original source file those images so if I were to change them and then reload them it would change them automatically and this means I don't have to come into Construct 2 to change the images now coming across from there I can cut the whole image I can copy the whole image so if I were to do some more red then if I copy close that down and then going across here to the right I can paste I've just pasted the new image there I select off that and do control Z control Z uh, is a keyboard command to undo it so it's got some basic keyboard commands I can use this to flip the image along the vertical or the horizontal I can rotate the image with these next keys either way I can crop the image down that's a oops daisy me um, I can use that to crop the transparent edges off first or I can use this rectangle here to select an area and then press crop to crop to that area. I can resize the image to let's say resize it to 32 or 32 and then I can choose to position the current image either to stretch it into that situation for example it stretched what I had into the 32, 32. I'll use these zoom keys here to zoom in or press 1 to zoom um, to 100% and let's say I resize it, so I resize the width to 64 and use the image stretch, it stretches it's the it stretches that image as it were and creates new pixels as it needs to be or for example if I resize this to 128 128 and I choose to align in the center it doesn't stretch it as such, it just uses blank transparent space so this is good to help you to resize your images and also these images help you to place them where you want to within the image because the blank space can be valuable uh, and as to how you're having your game. This thing on the far right just toggles the, the brightness. So that's basically it for the image editing in Construct 2. Now there are, there are other sprites which use it so for example the 9 patch if I double click and then click on that I'm brought to the image editor straight away and you notice there's no animation options around the outside now uh, other things I can use for example are uh, particles they also have it so this shows the image of the particle that was produced um, and without you, you can experiment looking at them sprite fonts do and the images is a series of letters within a format um, tile backgrounds also have that tile maps do as well um, I've got a webgl plugin there as well but that, that doesn't have, that's just me mentioning it because um, I didn't realise I had it <laughs> and I think that's the majority of the objects which have the image editor ok thank you very much for watching this video, I hope it's helped you uh, it's worth just experimenting with Construct 2, all these different things and just learning from that thank you very much for watching this video